Well, as you've seen, big day in Canberra today. Former Water Minister David Littleproud has lost his water portfolio following months of upset and controversy from farmers amongst the Murray-Darling Basin. The newly elected Nationals deputy leader has now picked up agriculture. Darren Chester has also been promoted. And Keith Pitt, the member for Hinkler, is off the bench and straight into Cabinet. The AFP has also dropped its inquiry into Angus Taylor's office over doctored documents used to attack Sydney Lord Mayor Clover Moore. For more insight, Claire Armstrong, federal political reporter at The Daily Telegraph, joins me now from our Canberra studio. Well, uh, Chester was saying, Claire, that uh, there were no jobs for the boys here, but uh, my understanding is that that's not exactly how it works uh, in politics in Canberra these days. Well, there were a lot of new jobs handed out. Uh, the the Deputy Prime Minister, Michael McCormack, has also lined up to say that it was all done on merit, but a number of the Nationals MPs who walked into the room for that infamous vote uh, to decide the leadership with Mr McCormack are among those who were promoted. So perhaps read into that what you will. The day of the vote, Tuesday morning, he walked in with uh, three MPs, Michelle Landry up in Queensland, Andrew G, and Mark Colton here in New South Wales. And all three of them uh, had a few extra portfolios added to their to-do <laughs> list today, as well as those other ones you've already touched on. So it's certainly a strange coincidence if there were no jobs for the boys uh, in this instance. Do you think uh, McCormack will get through this uh, new ruling where, you know, you need 75% uh, of uh, members to trigger a uh, leadership spill? I think Chester mentioned maybe 50%. Do you think that's something that, uh, that will happen? It's interesting because no one actually knows by how much McCormack won the leadership from, uh, in, from Barnaby's challenge. Uh, his camp is saying it was probably 16 to 5, some in Barnaby Joyce's camp saying 10 to 11. And if it was closer to 10 to 11, you'd imagine that they may not want to pass a rule that would make it harder to challenge again because, of course, they feel they got very close. At the moment in the Nationals Party, you only need one person to propose and a second person to uh, second that motion and you can have a leadership spill. So obviously the threshold at the moment is very low. Perhaps something like a 50-50 is uh, maybe a bit of a middle ground because that two-thirds uh, majority would be pretty hard to, to meet when you've, you've only got 21 uh, members that would be voting. Claire, how do you think this plays out uh, in the bush, in the regions? Do you think uh, constituents sort of really care about these internal divisions or do you think they actually take a lot of notice of who's running the party? I think they take very little notice. In fact, we often find that uh, with the deputy leader, uh, the deputy prime minister himself, Michael McCormack, that most people couldn't uh, necessarily recognise or him on the street or, or, or tell you his name if they weren't prompted. So, to think that the the average person cares about these sort of minute machinations within the party is probably a bit of a stretch. But at the same time, it is really important because, of course, these uh, the nationals are they do have carriage over issues that uniquely affect affect regional Australians, things like agriculture, resources, water, which is where a lot of uh, employment and all of those other concerns for the community uh, are focused. So to the extent that they care necessarily who the minister is, maybe not so much, but they obviously want it to be someone who's going to do a good job because it so uh, dramatically affects their lives. Claire Angus Taylor, his office, and he has been cleared tonight by the AFP. He'll be breathing a sigh of relief. Yes, he. Um, well, I don't know so much about a sigh of relief as much as uh, the the coalition today in question time, where we're, we're almost gleeful clapping and, and goading Labor, particularly Shadow Attorney General Mark Dreyfus, who uh, referred the matter to the police in the first place. It is worth noting, though, that he was less cleared so much as the AFP have decided not to uh, pick up and pursue the investigation. They say that they there's no guarantee that there'd necessarily be uh, enough evidence and, of course, that it takes a lot of time and resources away from potentially other investigations that they might have more luck with. So he's, uh, he's out of the woods, but not necessarily an entirely clean slate. And I'm sure Labor will be looking to exploit that uh, as the weeks and months continue. All right, Claire Armstrong, another very lively week in Canberra. Don't envy your job down there, that's for sure. Thanks for joining us on Sky News Across Australia.